Okay, I'm back with another unboxing video and I have something a little bit different today. I have the Google Pixel XL over here in the hazel color. Now, if you watch any videos on my channel, you know that I'm basically an Apple fanboy. I am fully locked in the ecosystem. I have my iPhone 15 Pro, Apple Watch Ultra, MacBook, iPad, AirPods, all of the Apple things. But lately I've been kind of curious to try something a little bit different and um, watching the keynote, the Google Pixel, 9 Pro looks amazing. So I wanted to give it a shot and see what it's like living in the Android ecosystem. So we'll do a quick unboxing. And as I peel off these tabs, I will say that I did use Android in the past uh, before I actually preferred it. I think my last Android phone was the HTC 10. And I love that phone. I love the HTC 10. And I had the M8, I think, before that. I had the Nexus 6P. That might have been the last Google phone that I had. I didn't I didn't actually own any of the Pixel phones because um, after the HTC 10 or the 6P, I don't remember which one, uh, I did switch to an iPhone 6S and kind of haven't looked back since. So if you've seen any other, any other unboxings, you've seen that there's a little sleeve over here, nice packaging, a good image of the phone itself, and the box over here with paper that kind of feels you know, it looks like recycled paper, but it's nice. I like this little diagram. So you pop this out and I notice that there is a pamphlet inside, which uh, I think it has, is this stuck in here somewhere? Oh, I guess it's held in by these little tabs on the side. I believe it has a SIM ejector tool and uh, maybe some warranty information and things like that. So some support documents and yes, a SIM ejector tool with uh, QR codes on each of these packets. So I guess if you lose the documentation or something, you can have that on a website. Next, we have the phone itself. So this is the Pixel XL. I did also pre-order the uh, standard Pixel 9 Pro because even though I've used max size phones, I've had the 14 Pro Max, I did have the 15 Pro Max earlier in the year, which I unboxed, but then since then I switched to the standard 15 Pro and gave the 15 Pro Max to my wife, uh, just because I was missing the smaller form factor. I tried the 13 mini for a little bit uh, for the same reason, uh, but in this case I did go with the XL because it was what's available first, so I figured let me try the XL, see what it's like with the bigger battery life, and uh, I'll, if I like it, I'll stick with the standard uh, standard size. So uh, here we have the USB-C to USB-C cable and I think that is it for the packaging. Pretty good packaging. The cable actually has like a nice soft silicone kind of feel. I'll leave that in there for now. Let's get to the main event. The phone itself so far feels nice. We'll get it out of the sleeve. Is there a way to open this without ripping it? Maybe not. Well, maybe if I push it in. Oh, there you go. There it is in the hazel color. Uh, first impression is good. It feels actually pretty nice in the hand. It reminds me a ton of the 13 Pro Max and, and I suppose the 14 Pro Max, but uh, it does have the soft edges. The glass feels nice on the back. The color of it is kind of like a gray color. I don't have the 15 Pro Max in natural titanium, but it reminds me of that color actually. Um, here we have the camera sensor array the big island over here as opposed to the cluster on the left. Um, I think they both look good. Um, I don't mind this look at all. Um, I know for the iPhone, I believe part of the reason why Apple goes with a cluster like this is that it helps when you transition between the lenses. Watching other videos, I've seen how on the Pixel and maybe other Google phones, when you switch between the wide, ultra wide, or the Telephoto lens, sometimes you get a perspective shift. Uh, there's a little bit of a jump in the perspective, and I think Apple alleviates that by having the cameras closer together in that uh, cluster. So uh, we'll have to see if that's the case with the Pixel phone itself, but uh, we've been looking at the back. There is a Google logo, which is nice. USB-C on the bottom, SIM card ejector tool. I'll have to see if I can use an electronic SIM because I haven't used a physical SIM in a very long time. Speaker hole cutout. And the fit and finish um, and the impression in the hand feels really nice. Um, taking a look at the USB-C port, um, it looks like it's centered nicely there. On the left side, we have nothing, just a nice shiny uh, metal frame. I believe it's aluminum. On the top is the 5G antenna cutout. I think that's a microphone porthole. An antenna line right in the middle. 
And then on the left side, I think we have the volume button and the power button. So that's a look at the color. Uh, let me see if I can give it a little boot. So like I was saying, I haven't used Android in a very long time. So I don't know if any of my information and the apps I formerly had is saved in my Google account. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see after almost a decade going back to Android, uh, what it's like living in the Android ecosystem. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. I'll try to set things up, see what my first impressions are, and um, yeah. Okay, I'm back and I believe I have it mostly set up. Uh, the transfer process was pretty smooth, transferring directly with the cable from my iPhone 15 Pro. Uh, it did take some time. I didn't transfer any of the photos because photos and videos are the largest amount of storage that I have on this. Um, so without that, just transferring messages and applications and stuff like that, uh, maybe the transfer through the cable took maybe about 20 minutes. And the phone is still setting up, so it's uh, still downloading some apps. But I do have it set up and it transferred over the wallpaper, which is nice. Um, yeah, so pretty smooth process with the transfer. But um, <laughs> I will say that for myself, not having used Android in a very long time, that um, there was a little bit of learning curve for me. So um, maybe I'm not as good with technology as I thought I was, especially new technology. Um, but let's just, uh, I will just discuss uh, what I think about the fit and finish and the look of the device itself, which I think is superb. I think uh, Google have done an excellent job uh, with this color. The phone feels great in the hand. It really does remind me of the 13 Pro and the 12 Pro uh, in the graphite color. The hazel color over here is kind of a light gray with some uh, green undertone, which um, I think might uh, hopefully come through on the camera. The shiny side rails, uh, in my opinion, adds a little bit of um, class, a little touch of uh, jewelry-like uh, look to it. Uh, so far, the fingerprints are not too bad just using it naked. Uh, the weight of it feels okay. I know it's the exact same weight as the 15 Pro Max, so I'm kind of used to it. Uh, yeah, so I think Google have done a great job. The camera island, I think, looks good. Doesn't really bother me. They've had some nice touches with the edges of the camera island also being glossy to match the glossy side rails, even though the backside of the camera island is matte. So that's a nice touch. Google have paid attention to those things, but um, there is one thing that I noticed, uh, my OCD, which is that some of the bottom is not exactly aligned. To me, to my eyes, it looks like the speaker cutout uh, is not exactly centered along the middle of the rail. It looks like it's just below the center. Uh, maybe someone with calipers or measurements can confirm that. I believe it's the same thing with the USB-C port also. And here, I think that's a microphone hole. Same thing, it's not really centered. It's just below center of the SIM card tray. So I feel like all of that should be lined up. Those are the kind of small touches I think that Apple usually pay attention to, uh, which might be very difficult on the manufacturing side. You know, the little screw holes here, the USB-C port, the uh, microphone holes and the speaker holes, are all centered along the frame over here. Uh, I think for the Pixel, like I said, to my eye, it seems like the speaker cutout is just off center. Very difficult to show on camera, but I could be wrong. Someone can correct me in the comments. Other than that one little nitpick, I think Google have done a fantastic job. The screen is beautiful beautiful and bright. Uh, the animations and everything seem very smooth to me. I did go into settings to make the resolution uh, the max resolution. And yeah, I think uh, first impression is pretty good. Having said all that, I do realize that for myself there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve going from iOS to Android. So uh, I'll try it in the next uh, week or two and see what my thoughts are. Currently, I feel like I'm going to be packaging it back and going back to my trusty iPhone just because it's um, familiar and comfortable. But yeah, having said all that, I think Google have done a great job. Um, I have not transferred my SIM yet. That is the one thing that I did not transfer because I think I'm just not quite ready to commit yet to going to the Pixel full time. But anyway, that's been my unboxing and first impressions of the Pixel 9 Pro XL in the hazel color. Uh, overall, a great device. Hope, hope that helps some of you out there and thanks for watching.